and I'm Elisa Bokeem and we are two brown chicks changing the face of therapy on both, both sides, sides of, of the, the couch. couch. Wait, wait, what happened? Like you, both sides. Both I'm sides. Thinking, okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever that excited. Like that's just the <laughs> both, both sides okay. All right. of the couch. Yes. yes. We are here. That part. <laughs> And today we are joined with two thirds yes. <laughs> of Latinas Rising. Welcome, Soul uh, and Tasha. Happy us. Yes. yes. <laughs> 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 Do your children and voices. Yes. Um, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. We really appreciate oh, it. Excited to have we definitely want to like give an overview of what Latinas Rising is. Mm -hmm. um, Especially y'all, y'all. It seems like y'all are doing a lot. So just what is it mm -hmm. exactly? Um, and, and what do y'all have going on? So um, you said two thirds. Uh, yes. There is there are three of us. Uh, and Namohika was unable to be here, but she's with us in spirit. She was really bummed out Aww. not being able to be here. Uh, but she had also contributed a lot to what Latina Rising is doing. And so, uh, so definitely we'll um, speak on what we we're how this all started. Um, and then our co-founders, which so is actually the primary person mm -hmm. that started Latinas Rising, and I guess I'll pay you back. Yeah, so Latinas Rising was actually just um, an idea a, a, two years ago, and it, it, it started off with my frustration um, when looking at things like domestic violence, violence against women mm -hmm. in general, right? Um, anything from domestic violence, from sexual assault, and how does violence against women affect uh, people of color, women right. of color, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and children of color. And what I found, long story short, is there is definitely um, a lack of uh, resources, uh, a lack of everything. Right. Um, we're underrepresented in a lot of the fields, in most fields. So when you're talking about mental health, um, we're our community is really uh, behind. Mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about law enforcement, um, our community is being left behind. Right. When you're talking about any field, our community is being left behind. Mm -hmm. And so definitely in the um, in my career in, in law enforcement, um, I saw that. And it really hurt um, because I'm first generation uh, Mexican American. My parents are immigrants from Mexico, and I, I like a lot of first generation um, immigrants. Uh, we look at things very differently through different lenses. Right. Um, and so, my law enforcement experience when I was doing that, um, I saw people that looked like my sister, right. that could be my sister, mm -hmm. that could be my, my mother, that, mm -hmm. that could be me, that could be my daughter. So it really affected on, it, it affected me um, on how I processed mm -hmm. what I saw and how I processed the, the realization that we are so behind in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and we're being victimized at higher rates we are really not talking about mental health. Um, so that's how Latinas Rising started. Yeah. It was just out of pain right. and frustration. And thinking about how can I affect change right. uh, that is not reactive in nature because that's what law enforcement mm. is. Most of it is. Right. Uh, not proactive so how could i be proactive in my community and so i had to step out of that world to figure out okay how can i share my knowledge mm -hmm. and how can i um, bring what i know uh, about our community and the lack of everything around it right. um, how do i do that so which is, that's, that's what I thought was so interesting about you, because when I met Sol, um, you were still in law enforcement, mm -hmm. and I was like, that is so dope, right? And you're like, 
Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just like the, having this Latina on the front line, right? And so when you are coming across those situations, you were encountering people that you could identify, like this could be a family member, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember when I met you, like this woman, like since day one, she's got all these projects going mm -hmm. on and she was coordinating <laughs> this, um, it was, you were coordinating a project to collect uh, feminine hygiene products yes. for um, the homeless, mm -hmm. right? And I thought, wow, that is mm -hmm. so incredible. So I love that being mm -hmm. proactive versus reactive. Right, and it also um, was something that I needed to do um, because it helped me heal mm -hmm. uh, everything that I had seen, everything that I had um, gone through, not only you know in my career, but even as a child. <clears throat> and it just helped me um, give back. Mm -hmm. And giving back is a great way to reconnect with who you with who you are, mm. uh, with all the feelings that life uh, you know brings on. Yeah. Um, so that's how Latinas Rising started. Uh, a lot of service work mm -hmm. um, was is the building blocks of Latinas Rising. Um, and so back then, I had the idea of, okay, so how can we talk about domestic violence mm -hmm. and sexual assault and mental health issues without scaring people off, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, especially the young people. Um, so I, I don't know how this came about, but I just said, let's get some women together, mm -hmm. um, share your stories and let's print it. And I was always taught in my career in law enforcement is that if it's not documented, mm -hmm. it never happened. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me chills. Yeah. And so I started looking, I Googled, started Googling. Latina stories, Latina books, anything dealing with Latina stories, and there was really nothing that came mm -hmm. up. There was maybe one or two. A lot of it is very academic work, mm -hmm. um, and so I felt like we were not reaching um, the audience right. that that needs this information. So I said, and just excuse me, I interrupt. You said yeah. academic, which I think is really important. I, I'm glad that we have some body of work academic for uh, women of color, right. mm -hmm. but we have to be mindful of who are we trying to reach. Right. If we're trying to uh, change um, the stigmas and do away with stigmas and mental health and even talking about these really um, difficult topics, we have to be mindful of our audience and who's our audience. It's still the, the difficult mindsets that are not wanting to do away with right. that idea that we don't go to therapy, right. we don't right. get help, we don't right. do that. So having, doing that work and being mindful of that, then you're able to reach the populations that are still being re-victimized. Right. Because the more educated you come, right, you become more aware. You have right. a, a awareness opposed right. to, are we leaving certain groups behind? Are we leaving our people behind right. that don't have that ability or don't have those opportunities? Right, right, right. 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 And so I think that's great that you were mindful, like, yeah, there's academic, but what does that mean? What does right. it look like? And making it accessible. Yes, and academ you know, academia, um, uh, it's another field that we're not represented. Exactly. Right. There's yeah. some. Yes. There's some literature, right? Right. Like some being, and a lot very of it little. is outdated, too. Mm -hmm. The research, mm -hmm. too, it's mm -hmm. um, very, <clears throat> you know, it represents who is in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what law enforcement does is, and we don't realize that, is that we do, we're doing quality research right um, through our interviews right and so we are able to establish patterns mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> for all law enforcement out there you guys are researchers <laughs> <laughs> seriously um, yeah you very, get that frontline data very mm -hmm. rich qualitative information right mm -hmm. and that's what I got it was all these patterns how do I share these patterns so that we can reduce the amount of people, not just women and not just girls, but our boys too. Right. Right. Um, how do we reduce the victimization? Um, how do we prepare? How do we, you know, how do we, uh, let's teach the red flags so mm -hmm. that our kids can know 
um, because there's a lot of patterns within a, a lot of these um, crimes and a lot of these, um, you know, when you're talking about domestic violence and violence against women and children, there's so many patterns there. Yeah. Um, and the stories were all the same, mm. most of them, mm. you know, all, all the same framework. Yeah. What, what, what were some of those common threads, like some of those common, like for somebody who may be watching, right, and maybe they have a loved one or, or listening even, yeah. and it's difficult to recognize patterns when you're part of the pattern, right? right like you don't right. recognize mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what were some of those red flags that you saw or those common patterns? Yeah, um, definitely isolation. Isolation. And if you have time, Google the um, the um, cycle of violence or the mm -hmm. violence wheel. Mm -hmm. The violence um, wheel. But it's domestic violence and sexual assault go hand in hand, mm. just as mental health does. Which I think is such an important part like that's such a key point to make right that I think so often when someone is sexually assaulted by their partner they sometimes don't recognize it as an assault right, right. well because yeah. we're married or because that's my partner and they don't recognize it as being assault right, right. it's a it's the person's unable to distinguish right and with saying that because I worked in sexual abuse child sexual abuse for so long, mm -hmm. there's this idea that women don't sexually abuse right. mm -hmm. mothers mm -hmm. right. because women are what? The primary caregiver. Right. And so that is a, a topic that would come up because, well, we can't imagine a woman doing that or right. a mother, but because we can't distinguish. Mm -hmm. um, so I could see in a relationship, yeah. it's my partner, it's my spouse, it's my mm -hmm. boyfriend, whatever, we're mm -hmm. together, we're living out. Or, or my girlfriend, right? Yeah, like right. whether you're in the, you know, whether you're in the same-sex relationship, or whether you know it's a it's a heterosexual relationship with the man also, mm -hmm. right? Because they can also be victims right. of, right. you know. So one of the red flags is manipulation. Manipulation. Um, manipulating your feelings, manipulating your uh, what we what they call grooming, your environment. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I'm sorry, Habits. can you tell them how, what an example of what, what yeah. someone who's trying to manipulate your feelings, yeah. what that might look like? So, isolation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of, he grabs my phone, he or she grabs my phone, and she lo he looks at, through it all the mm -hmm. time, and right. he accuses me mm -hmm. of doing this, or sleeping right. with people. I mean, mm -hmm. it's extreme, extreme uh, actions sleeping with people mm -hmm. um you you met so and so somewhere and he knows your schedule mm -hmm. so that's a a big uh, or a very common thing that i saw was this uh complete control of your time mm -hmm. they know your schedule mm -hmm. and they are still accusing mm -hmm. you of you slept with this guy. You're talking to this guy, mm. even though he already has your yeah, phone and he's done. looking through right. it. Right. So it's a very ex so extreme, mm -hmm. and, and so it, you can't say, you know, he's isolation um, is the only thing. It's it's all these other elements around right. it that I they think manipulation of feelings can be. Estás loca, estás mensa. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. all in your head. Yes. It's like gaslighting. Yeah. Right. Gaslighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I only do it because I love you. Right. So you're getting mad at me because yes. I've shown you how I, right. I love So you. when they make you responsible for their feelings. Right. And questioning what you're seeing, right? So, like, well, maybe I am crazy. Maybe maybe they do love me. Maybe, mm -hmm. like, so it's really. Love. Right. Love is and then they won't just do that to you. Mm -hmm. um, they will do it to your environment, to okay. your family, to your mom, to your sisters, to the police officers that come if the woman happens to call. Right. She's just crazy. Like, look at her. Yeah. And he's co cool, calm, and collected. Right. Right. You're and that's, out. Mm -hmm. that's actually the warning signs is like, this guy is cool, calm, and collected. While this other person. Yeah, well, this, uh, she's, uh, you know, she's hysterical or yeah. emotional or just yeah. emoting. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> the manipulation, the isolation. Um, grooming everybody else, telling everybody else that you're crazy, telling everybody else you're a bad kid, you you know you're you're a liar. Um, and I think we, that's a really good point. Sorry, because I know when people say grooming, you often think of grooming the victim. 
But I think grooming, like you said, your environment. Your right. Making sure everybody else is on right. your side. You and know your sister's thing, crazy. Why would you? Sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. that uh, perpetrators system. will groom not only the, the mother or the caregiver, whoever, but they're grooming the, the family. Like, okay, what's the routine? Right. This person's babysitting this person. This right. time I have a loan. And so you're right. It's not only grooming. And I think yeah. that's, if, if I'm hearing you, that's what inspired Lightning that's Rising. Like, yeah. what references do we have to give to our, our communities that, hey, these are patterns. This is what's yeah, happening. Right, yeah. How do we break um, uh, from the trauma and start healing? Right. How do we start that process? Um, and how do we trust the source that's telling us this? Right? Or trust that, ourselves. Right. Well, and, and that information that you're saying, like, who's giving it to them? Because I think that's, that's a big thing that we talk about, how sometimes our communities don't come to seek professional help because of the lack of representation. But right. when they have somebody like you all that's telling them like this is what happened and so you I was on the front line, right? right. Like there are you're already able to have a different level of trust probably out the bat mm -hmm. than than someone that doesn't represent them. Mm -hmm. Um and so that uh, I wanted to make it accessible. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, I mean, I don't like to sit in meetings mm -hmm. and in workshops and when, I, when I'm being talked to about very deep, you know, emotional stuff. And then after the, you know, the session, be given a pamphlet and say, right, here, right, read it. about domestic yeah, right, violence. Right, right. That's not working. You know, right. but, um, I don't want to, I don't want to be given that. I don't want to go through that. Why would I think that anybody else? So I felt like bringing these topics to light, but also covering, not covering them, but you know, putting them in a pretty package, mm -hmm. uh, in an accessible package where, like you said, representation matters, people that look like, like us in the community um, and that speak our language. They're not speaking academic right. language. They're yeah. speaking yeah. language that we can understand. Right. Um, and definitely storytelling to me right. was very important because um, I also write and I write poetry mostly, um, but uh, storytelling is so important in our community. Right. You know, growing up with my mom, mm -hmm. you know, um, telling me stories about her, her, you know, her childhood, her life, teaching me, guiding me through the stories, um, and that's very natural for us in our community. Right. I think it's natural for, for yeah. everybody, but especially for us that we grow up with such a tight-knit family. Right. Um, listening to our grandmothers tell our story, or tell their story, and I felt like, how do we get this information? Well, let's just story. tell a story. Yeah. Um, but real life stories with real women, everyday women. Um, I became involved in a couple of self-publishing works and what I found about self-publishing is that it's also inaccessible. It's also, you don't have the representation there. So it, it's it's expensive. So if you want to document your story, if you want to pub self-publish your story, it's still expensive. Right. You know? So right. you have women that can't afford it. You know, you have communities that can't afford it. How is that fair? Mm -hmm. You know, um, how are they documenting their stories? How are they passing right. that knowledge along? Well, we're not right. right. You know, um, once you know we don't document it, it's gone. Yeah. Um, and so our our kids, our communities are growing up without that history, that yeah. historical reference, historical references, um, because we just don't have access to right. that. And then we're we're we've stopped storytelling. Mm -hmm. I, th I think just to piggyback on what you're saying, and um, I think the reason why Millennium Mental Health has I'm just thinking about when you're talking about storytelling and the point that we're using our language. Mm -hmm. When you use dope, right, you're you, you're reaching a community, right. our community, right, that is overlooked, right, and underrepresented, just because that one word, right, was significant, right. right? And so for Latinas rising, having us to, we're in general people of color, we're storytellers, tellers, right. and we're very grassroots. When I say grassroots, we've always had to be creative to get the resources right. yes, to, true. to um, make some progress in whatever situation right. we're in, right? 
And so, yes, we're in 2018 and we have all this media, whatever, but we still have to be creative right. against the machine. Right. Yes. Yes. Right? right. So we still have to be very grassroots. We still have to be very organic. And we still have to be very close to what we know, right. which is what? Our roots. Yeah. Yes. Um. Both, and I'm speaking for being Afro Latina, right? Right. That for me, which I think is a blessing, that I, it's so rich for me to be Latina and then to be Black. Yeah. You know? yeah. Because I understand true double, right? right. The importance of how to be connected. Yeah. And how yes. that has allowed me to connect in, with both communities. Right. 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 Um. And so, just wanted to piggyback with the, yeah. the importance yeah. of documenting through, you know, like in this rising the book, and how it sounds like that's how this really got inspired yes. with right. how do I give back mm -hmm. to that to the community you grassroots. Really back, yeah. Yeah. grassroots right grassroots well you know it's so, it, what, everything you're saying it's reminding me of our conversation that we had with Dr. Manuel mm -hmm. when um, you know we had him on that webinar um, that we did uh, for changing the face of therapy and we've had him on the podcast he's out in Austin and he talks uh, a lot about you know when he hears people say you know Black people don't go to therapy or brown people don't go to therapy and he says you know therapy is ours and just reminding us that mm -hmm. our communities have always gone to elders to counsel right we practice meditation right that either be through prayer mm -hmm. um we've practiced and i think about growing up and what he's like this is this mine okay mm -hmm. this is a tea for this right <laughs> so these are Vicks. practices right. Right. it was Vicks. you can't leave out of <laughs> this is your potential so, so these are things that we already have practiced right it just got Discolonized yes, right, yes. and given a certain name, right? Yeah. So then, wait, that is we knew how to heal it. And get touch yeah. therapy, right? Right? right. 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 We talk yes. about yes. It, you know, those are things that we have already practiced. So yes. these are so when we talk and again, you know, we can talk about this on and on, right? Because for whatever reason, somewhere down the line, we got so disconnected and started right. to believe that it was this right. is not for us, it's right. not accessible for us. Right. But we continue to practice, practice mm -hmm. it, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's bringing back, and that's what we'll talk about, and it's bringing back who we are. And and, and I think Ebony and I have talked about this before, as, as a like, oh, in my water. <laughs> as a clinician of color, right, how, when you get into the field and there's not a lot of you there, you might be one of the only one right. or one of two, two. right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're trying to figure out, so how do I show up yeah. in my fullness, right? It, you know, how do I bring all of me to the field when it it's not really set up in a way to encourage that? And so a lot of what you're saying is kind of what we, Based melanin and mental health off of, of yes we've got the degrees yes we understand all of that and we're still gonna bring who we are to this because we we don't want the jargon and all of that right. to turn people away but I love what you're saying because what you're saying is hey we've always known how to heal ourselves and we've always known how to connect with our communities with other people and find healing through that um, and so how can we continue to bring more of that into the mental health field today, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, and I'm thinking about Black Panthers when it was created, how they saw a need, again, you're not going to do it for me, right. so exactly. I have we'll to do it for my right. community. Exactly. So even though y'all are in mental health and we're Latinas rising, we have the same intention. We're Absolutely. trying to get there the same party the right. same way, right. maybe Absolutely. taking a different route, mm -hmm. but our goal is to serve who? Those that are underserved and overlooked and, uh, and underrepresented. Right. Why? Because how do we, if we're thinking, you know, I'm thinking about from a clinician standpoint, our job is, or our interest is in the healing of humans, right? Mm -hmm. um, but certain humans are being left behind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how can I, in good conscience, do this work? Right. But I'm selective. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so I think that's just been great about like you know, rising the representation. We're all aware that there's a lack of representation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, for us, it was important that it didn't just look like one Latina on the profile. Yes. Right? yes. That's yeah. what I wanted to to like you said earlier is, I think. 
it throws people off. People still have an idea of what Latin, the Latinx community looks like, right? And it's typically more people with Euro features, mm -hmm. right? right. right. And, yeah. You know, looking more like high egg, right? But yeah. like, you know, yes. right? And and that's what you see. Turn on. Tele, you know, oh, yeah, Telemundo, yeah. whatever, yeah. like you're gonna see even within our community, there still is colorism. Yes. Oh, yes. There still is a lack of representation of the diversity, even within the com in the community. And right. when you tell somebody, you know, we talked about this before, when I tell people like, you know, I'm Mexican, Mexican, <laughs> you don't look Mexican. I'm like, well, I love my sombrero and my, you know, <laughs> <laughs> my at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can go both ways. You gotta look <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but you look <laughs> mixed like <laughs> right. well and, and and that speaks to the idea that you don't get just we are the mixture of all of that yeah we yeah. are the mixture of all of the you've got the african roots you've got the european roots you got the the indigenous native american roots right mm -hmm. we have all of that so it's going to show up differently right. in our communities right. but I love, that's what I love, and I love that um, picture of the three of y'all, because I'm like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the like, where are your biggest fans? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, not too long ago, we had this discussion, I think that's what's been so, so rich about the connection we've made, yeah. is that we're having really difficult conversations. Right. Mm -hmm. Sol and I both grew up in South Texas. We're right. both from the valley. Yes. Two different experiences. Yeah. I, I lived for two years in Laredo, so again. Okay. <laughs> okay, but I don't know if you were like born and raised here. It, mm -hmm. Just being from a different demographic Absolutely. is a different experience. So Hells, yeah, growing I, up, probably having very similar as well as culture, the exposure. Like I actually went to school in Mexico for mm -hmm. a semester. So when people, I. They're likely, if I say speak Spanish and she says she speaks Spanish, mm -hmm. they're going to trust her more mm -hmm. with right, being bilingual right, than right. me. They're going right. to think you learned Spanish. Right. Yeah. Or they're right. not going to think that my Spanish is strong. Right. right. Okay. So, but when they hear it, it's still like, wait a minute. But right. How? How is how? it so strong? <laughs> right. Like, in the sense of how am I so fluent? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, like, you have to prove, prove that you even have, you know, a right to speak. And I have to put like, you know, right now I have to put a disclaimer. I grew up I went to school. Yeah, right. I've lived, I right. had a lot of time. time. You gotta yeah. justify it, like show yeah, me. Right. But we had mm -hmm. a conversation not too long ago and so it was like I never considered and I don't know if you wanna share out on it, but yeah. We talked about in the spaces, you know, um Edna's Dominican. Mm -hmm. Um and Edna, she's there. Hey, Edna. Hey. 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 So Edna's Dominican, you know, I'm biracial, and then so, you know, uh, Mexicana, right? Mm -hmm. And so we had this discussion about the spaces. We have to be aware, of, especially so, I mean, Edna and I, what spaces we can go to. I right. can't show up with all Latinas that look like so. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, and you're with who again? Right, right, right. 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 And Edna, you had, I mean, so you had an experience where you tried to connect, right? Um, Afro-Latina, and it was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, I was like, well, you know, why are you in this group if you're not Afro-Latina? Um, and I, my kids are Afro-Latinos, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's one of the things that um, my past career taught me is that you don't, you sometimes can't ask for permission, is mm. you got to take that space. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, you yeah, gotta, I need more of that. You got to <laughs> go into that space right. and say, and claim it. This I have is my reason space. To be here, right? Yeah, right. I have a reason to be here because, hey, you know, my children are, and I need to advocate for them. Right. Um, and if I don't know, then right. how am I going to advocate? Um, so I'm, I, I'm not even going to apologize, but I'm here. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which so. is the reason why we're doing this work, right? Yeah. Because, and, and I'll get back to the whole colorism and the whole thing, but. That's a whole podcast. <laughs> I know, honey. Right, I like know. a three-hour podcast. Yeah. Right. But that's the whole, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what you said. I'm not going to ask for permission. We are no longer going to ask for right. permission. Right, right. So that's why we have millennials. Right. Right. We have Latinos Rising. Yeah. That's why we have uh, other organizations pushing mm -hmm. um, right. to be seen and to be heard and to, to do the work. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we talked about how we have to move the whole code switching. Mm -hmm. We right. have to move differently. Right. And even amongst speak, speak yes. differently, wear our hair differently, you know, I can't show up 
you know, the eight to five with my hair like this, because they'd be like, oh, your hair's cute today. It's different. Uh -huh. <laughs> Too long ago, she was approaching um, a, a business, and it was all black owned. And then I'm Dominican, and she's like, they were like, oh, the whole demeanor changed. Mm. Like, well, how are we gonna connect? Right. Well, people, look, yes, we black and brown. you're not the only one being left behind. Right. We're all being left behind. So right. we need to. Well, and I think sometimes because of that you'll find even within the community that people don't want, on the flip side, don't want to identify right. as black. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not black, I'm Dominican. Right. Or yeah. I'm not black, I'm um, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. like, that, but, but so much of that is that pushback that you get from people that ends up, you know, like when you're not able to see representation or to be celebrated for all these different roots, then you start to like distance yourself yeah. from other, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I think so much of that, you know, just kind of like what you're facing on a daily basis impacts our mental health, yes. right? Like just even understanding your identity, you know, mm -hmm. like, I know, like, where I, I grew up in the Midwest, and it was, like, this little bitty farm town where I'm, like, one of ten, you know, Mexicans in an all-white school. Mm. And it's, like, you know, like, you don't, you feel like you don't really connect there either. And so, and then if you do grow up here, um, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's George Lopez that, that makes that joke. Like, you realize just how American you are when you go, like, to visit your family in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Cause then over there, your family's like, oh, well, you're, 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 you know, you're a gringa. Yeah. Like, you're not Mexican either. So you just kind of, that, that so mm -hmm. much of our mental health is, is about self-awareness. Yes. Right? Like, your self-awareness, your confidence, who you are in this world, mm -hmm. and if you're struggling, to just mm -hmm. even figure that out, mm -hmm. how does that impact how you move through the world? Yeah, and yeah. I think Latinas Rising, for me, was about uh, acknowledging that even though I had this degree and this experience, I could still be victimized, mm -hmm. and I needed to be able to heal. Mm -hmm. um, and what tends to happen um, is that we isolate ourselves right. when we're hurt, especially with Latinos and Latinas because we're taught to always be strong and I don't even think it's Latinos It's like people of color. Right. Like we're right. taught to be strong right. to be able to take it um, You know and just push forward right uh, and that's one of the biggest things for me it, and I and I, I tell the other um, Tasha and Edna is that this is about self-healing right. about healing each other mm -hmm. um, and also helping others heal and one of the things that I always tell them is, um, you know, this is about us. If yeah. you're not having a good mental health day, if you're having some type of issue, like you don't worry about coming to an event or, you know, you have this deadline and we have to do this for Latinas Rising, like, no. Right. Like, I really believe that if we start flipping that switch on how we manage our organizations, our companies, mm -hmm. and make it about people and yeah. not the bottom line right. that we can still make money and create social change yeah um and so i always tell them is like this um this group is gonna is gonna honor uh your mental health and your emotions mm -hmm. and things that happen to you in life mm -hmm. if you cannot make it don't think that um, you know oh right. my god she's not here right. like no like that's what we want you to do mm -hmm. yeah. to to be able to come back right. and stay with us for 50 more years right, versus right. burning out in 10. Right. Yeah. And that's why you see so much um, cynicism within a lot of our organizations is yeah. because you have people that are burned out by our old archaic systems that were built for efficiency. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about government, mm -hmm. you're talking right. about all these uh, things based on this classic model of an efficient organization mm, versus many. people yeah. um, and so that was a big thing for me to um, to establish from the very beginning is this isn't about me this is about us and this is about everybody else and this is about my kids and yeah. you know and, and my husband and so um, 
yeah, I, I just, I'm, this has been a lifesaver for me. And mm -hmm. I always tell them, like, this is such a lifesaver for me because I am, I am healing through mm -hmm. this. Because mm -hmm. we all have a life and we all go through stuff. And, yeah. you know, even though I was law enforcement, I was, you know, my family was victimized. Mm -hmm. And so I have to get through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the way is to build community. Love it. Love well, I mean, the biggest thing of Latinos rights, and I guess I'm a corporate, it's like what we are, what we're doing is self-awareness, self-discovery, and, and healing. Mm -hmm. And so, but how do we do that? We we are going to have to start talking about the difficult things, right. Right? which we have mental health panels. And we've been in spaces, like not too long ago, we were at a Quaker church. It was just us, but guess what? Wow. You never would have seen people of color at that church, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and it was just about how do we... Um, uh, implement compassion in our on our daily work, right? right. Or the work that we do, mm -hmm. and so, but I know one of the questions was like as far as uh, favorite resource or favorite mm -hmm. book, and one right now that I'm like obsessed with is Sisters of the Yam, right? And how oh I don't know if you see it, but so there's a particular passage, and I'm going to do a summation. Mm -hmm. It talks about um, in order to there for there to be healing. Mm -hmm there has to be change, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we're afraid for change. For sure. But the reason that therapy is dope because you don't have to do it by yourself. Right, right. Right. right? Um, and we're not a people that we've had to do it by ourselves. Right. Because we've had to connect in order to sure. get ahead, even in the most difficult, I think about our ancestors, I think about uh, what our communities have had to do, create pantries, create whatever they had to right. do, right? for healing, right. for sustainment, um, self-preservation. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's what we're the biggest thing that Latinos Rise has wanted to do is bring to the forefront representation. We don't look the same, right. but we're women of color, right. um, but perhaps have similar struggles, but also different experiences. Right. Yeah. And how do we cultivate change? What well, we're going to have to start talking about. Yeah. And yeah. that was so important for me when I started this is, I, I don't even know how I connected with you guys. Um, but to me, it was. Could you I, look? I don't know. I don't know. You posted something about it. You said you were looking for a mental health. And she's good for Bowen, told y'all. Yeah. 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 I just said, can I help set up in the yeah. background? Yeah. 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 And she's like, no, you gotta be on the radio show. I mean, she spoke out of like her heart. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, I can handle more than I think I can. And so I always tell people uh, and our co-founders, it's like, just show up. Yeah. You know, even yeah, without right. makeup, even with your hair crazy, sometimes it just takes for you to show up and say, you know, I belong here yeah. and this is, I'm going to take my space. Yeah. I think that is the perfect thing for people to take away from this, no matter where you are in your life. But even with therapy, right? Like, just show up for therapy, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> it's hard to just do. show up. Mm -hmm. Like, I tell clients that all the time. Like, I don't underestimate the uh, investment that it requires time, energy, resources, and for you to just show up and sit on the couch and be like, I'd really rather be somewhere right. else than to right. be talking about some of the stuff that I may have avoided talking about for a really long time. Just show up. Yeah. And, and the process, that's part of beginning the process, right? I love the... the you have to have change for healing mm -hmm. because sometimes it feels like there is this expectation that we should just heal in the current system. Right. Like just get over it and just move past it. Right. Mm -hmm. And not make too much of a wave about it. Right. Right. And so then when you see people that are attempting to make changes and do things and it's like you're being disruptive, mm -hmm. you're causing problems. Right. Yeah. And the you're not doing that right. Right, right, right. We want you to do you need to just right. be comfortable in the system that we provide right. for you and get over whatever has happened in the right. past. You're not supposed Nothing to wear your hair like that. Supposed, needs right. to change at all. Right. <laughs> and so I love the the idea of like, no, in order for healing to happen, that means change has to happen yeah. too. And that gives you the power of, which is again why we started what we're starting, is like you sometimes have to be that change. Right. You can't as always depend as on the is. majority to mm -hmm. be the change. You have to decide what that change is and, and be it. So I really it. recommend um, just reading um, Sisters of the Yam because it talks about how also we consider uh, like death and dying as like actual physical uh, loss of mm, right. uh, breathing or, breath or right. organs or whatever, right? But dying can also be severing absolutely certain behaviors, absolutely. relationships, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, Dying to your trauma, unhealthy patterns, right, right. unhealthy mm -hmm. patterns, right, to start anew, right, right. Everybody. And so, and when, when I said talk of uh, being aware, we have to be aware and acknowledge. I think I am tra traumatized, right. You know what? I've been through some stuff. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I think I'm right. I right, experience trauma. Right, right. right. Sitting with that, because a lot of times that's what we're running from. Right. And we're steady running. And we're steady running even to acknowledge that you've had some experiences that are traumatic. Yeah. Right? yeah. And they're so ambivalent to Right. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing to remember with, you know, die to your unhealthy patterns and all of that is that with that death, there is also grief. Right. Right? Yeah. That's part of why it's so hard. So, yeah, like even though it might be an unhealthy relationship mm -hmm. right or an unhealthy decision making pattern whatever mm -hmm. there will still be grief in letting go of what you know because it is a loss yeah. but you know i love the idea of this ongoing rebirthing right evolution change yeah, and the thing, of, you know change uh and i think that's the big the rebirthing you don't ever stop right um I guess growing or right. the rebirthing. Rebirthing can happen every day. Right. It can Absolutely. happen um, in any minute or any second. Um, but I think that's the whole purpose, and our I'm hoping that that's our goal. That we are setting ground and a space for that to happen yeah. without judgment, right? Um, and um, in a place that it is going to be safe. And yeah. when I say safe, like that's why the whole we encourage even when we have mental health panels. Mm -hmm. therapy mm -hmm. so it could be in a safe and a clinical setting right. where you are also guided in a way that you're not a risk to yourself and others right. too right those are right, things right, right. we have to be mindful um, but we're not just like the giving the pamphlet here's a resource let's kind of start the initiating getting comfortable with talking about it and guess what I have someone that you can continue this conversation right right right, with. right, right, right. and guess what you know what the bonus is they look like you and I and so um I think that's just been our whole objective is we don't come and I think the biggest thing about just showing up sometimes you're not going to see us all pretty and dolled up right, right? because that can be intimidating mm -hmm. like I went and they were all like oh, together, yeah, yeah, yeah. together yeah. and um, I don't know if I fit in you yeah. know 
know what? Don't worry about fitting in. Just show up. Yeah. You may not have nothing to say that day. You may feel like, oh, I'm not going to connect. Just show up because you'll be surprised how the healing starts hearing right. other people's story yes. and their experiences. And you're like, dang, I'm not the only one. Right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. connection. And so Edna was part of the anthology, right? I'm, yes. I don't know if you wanted Edna. to not talk about the book. No, no, no. And so that's what it is. Yeah. Well, how, oh. how, how can they get the book? So because we have been honoring um, a lot of things that have happened specifically in my life, um, definitely the flood, we're affected by the flood. Um, I just told myself, look, the project has to take a, a seat mm. uh, in the back. Uh, I will um, get to it when I get to it. Uh, I have to take care of myself and my family right now. And so we were supposed to have this book done like a long time ago. <laughs> the authors are like, I'm confused. What's going on? Um, and I know I told the authors, like, like listen in. And that's what it is, is we're honoring our, um, our health and our mental health. And um, we're honoring what is happening around us too, because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's happening that's taking our sa safety nets away in the Latino community. Um, and people of color, just we've always had those safety nets right. pulled from us. Um, and I think we need to start building them um, up through conversations, through actions. Um, and so we're having, um, the book is going to come out in, hopefully in December. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm giving like a really kind of far away date. Um, it may happen sooner, but it'll be on Amazon. It'll be on latinas-rising.com because latinasrising.com is actually a porn site. Oh my so, God. Latinas <laughs> Wow. It will be on sale there. We will be. We will start having events and promotions uh, once we have the book in hand, and um, that's what we're about. It's about yeah. healing. It's about rebirth. It's about building community. It's about building safety nets. It's about bringing our or taking our spaces back. Wow. Uh, not asking for permission and not saying you're sorry, um, because we belong here. Right. right? Um, and it does take a community to um, bring back that security. Yes. Nobody's going to give it to no, us. No, right. Uh, um, you know, the machine is going to take it away. Right. You know, Y'all know um, who the machine is. <laughs> the machine. Wait, the wait, system. Wait, wait, wait. You know, the system's in place. Yeah. We're talking about educational mm -hmm. system, universities, um, government, government system. Right. Um, those systems are not here. Right. right. So yeah. we More have to build yes. our own. Um, it's yeah. going to take some time. Have patience and support your people in uh, in the community that are trying to do oh, this job. Awesome. And we have the, the t-shirt campaign, which um, I think in September we're gonna attempt to release. Um, we actually had like uh, yeah. 10 Latinas that took a shirt a design their own shirt, picked a. I love those. What yeah. was it? That goes before black. <laughs> yeah, and that was not intention. Yeah. I just was like, I'm gonna wear this for this photo <laughs> shoot. Um, and so uh, Lisa Quintanilla, she uh, is uh, created, uh, created created that awesome. in particular. Um, you can follow her. She's on um, Instagram. I think it's Cositas. Cositas by, by Lisa. By Lisa. Uh -huh. And so, but anyways, the the T-shirt campaign. The shirts are really cute, but there's a story behind each mm -hmm. one. Um, and so um, eventually we've been working tirelessly to try to get that out. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things that uh, we've noticed that when women come out to take pictures, they get so excited and they start feeling really beautiful and then like their whole um, right. affect and mood changes, right? right? Yeah. And so it has not only been about the t-shirt campaign, but it's been kind of like nurturing that self-esteem. Yeah. 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 From that one moment, La Latinas are known to put everything else before Woo! ourselves. Yes. Yes. And what I've noticed is, I mean, I had my first professional photo shoot with Latinas Race. And you look so beautiful. That yellow Thank on you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we found was that a lot of Latina, professional Latinas, they have never had a oh, professional photo shoot. Mm. And I remember Claudia Macias, shout out to Claudia Macias. You know, she was like, I'm having this terrible day that day. I can't, I, I just can't say, so, you know what? I'll pay, I'll pay your makeup. Just show up. Just mm -hmm. come. However you are, just come. We'll take care of it. And hers is probably the bomb, like the best yes. thing to <laughs> know. She left. I mean, she was wearing her cape, uh -huh. you know, after a while. And it's like, that's what it takes is comadre. Just show up, yeah. you know. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Um, because you don't know what we're going through. Right. We don't know what 
Yeah, I mean, and showing up sometimes is all that you need to do. Right. Like y'all said. And so my people are like, I was gonna say that about the quote. She has this quote about when there's women, there's community, and so. When there is like women of color together, and because we can really connect with experiences, my God, we're like unstoppable, right? Right. right and right. so just the whole mood in that place can change. Um, but I know you were gonna say something. I was just asking how do you, like so they can keep up with everything that y'all have going on. How do they follow you? Um, Latinas website? Rising on Facebook, okay. and then like we have our, our page, Instagram, Facebook, yeah, Instagram, Instagram. Y'all, y'all on Twitter? Not yet, but okay. we will be. Okay. okay. And Number. the actual site. Dash. 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 So yeah, awesome. so the book you will be able to get it December, December, yes. on Amazon and at our website. Yes, <laughs> and um, awesome. Yes, we really appreciate you. Oh, for thank joining. you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. I feel thank like there's so much more conversation I that know. we can have. I was taking notes about like, talk about this at some point. Yes. Like, so um, thank you again. Thank you, ladies. Um, make sure that you follow. Thank us. you, Edna. <laughs> thank you. Edna. <laughs> and one of our sayings is, you don't have to be perfect. But you do perfect. have to be brave. Oh, love it. Don't love be perfect. It. Be brave. Yeah. There is a lot of courage in showing up yes. imperfectly. Right? Right. Yes. right. All right, y'all. Well, this was so good. Bye. Follow um, us across uh, social media at Melanin and Mental Health, Melanin Health on Twitter, and go to melaninandmentalhealth.com for events. We do have an events page now with all of our upcoming woo! events. Yeah. Uh, shop and directory yes get the merchandise sign up for the Merch. webinar coming out next month uh that's for therapists and find a therapist over at melaninandmentalhealth.com that's yes. what that's there for all right